When it comes to quality sleep, Ashley has you covered with top mattress brands at winning prices and with special financing options available. You can snooze now and pay later. Plus, your mattress purchase helps give the gift of better sleep to children in need and U.S. Special Operations Forces. Visit your local Ashley store or shop online today and make every snooze count. Financing is subject to credit approval. See store or ashley.com for details. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. With the Internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash podcast free. All lowercase, shopify.com slash podcast free, shopify.com slash podcast free. Welcome to True Crime Garage. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, thanks for listening. I'm your host, Nick, and with me, as always, is a man that, just like Buffalo Bill, he could also use a hand moving a couch. He is the captain. It puts lotion on the skin. It's good to be seen, and it's good to see you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. Today we are drinking rye by the hardworking men and women at the Terrapin Beer Company, garage grade three and three quarter bottle caps out of five. This beer was awarded the American Pale Ale Gold Medal at the 2002 Great American Beer Festival, made with five varieties of hops and a generous amount of specialty malts. Rye Pale Ale offers a complex flavor and aroma that is both aggressive and well-balanced. Just like you, my friend. Well, and Rye was brought to us by these aggressive and well-balanced individuals. First up, we have Kinsey from Kodiak, Alaska. And a big we like a jib to Olivia in Portland, Maine. And here's a cheers and a O Canada to our friend Jennifer in Didsbury, Alberta. I think I just Didsburyed in my pants. Next up, we have Colleen from Denver. We also have Monique from Parts Unknown. Mm. Monique loved the captain's puka, not hada comment. <laughs> that, that, like, I kind of forgot about that. That yeah. was a while ago. I try to forget about everything I've said. And last but not least, a big shout out and thank you to Rebecca in Pendleton, Oregon. And thanks for donating to the beer fund. You can do so at our website, truecrimegarage.com, and click on the donate banner. Also, it is the last day. If you're listening to this on a Tuesday, then Wednesday is the last day to order your hoodies or they'll be gone forever. All right, Captain, that's enough of the business. Everybody gather around, grab a chair, grab a beer. Let's talk some true crime. Friends say their final goodbyes to a South Georgia teen found dead at a high school. Good evening, I'm Jade Belexa. Thank you for joining us. Funeral services were held today for Kendrick Johnson. Deputies say the 17 year old was found more than a week ago inside a rolled up wrestling type mat. Ty Wilson is now live for us in the newsroom. Ty, I bet it was an emotional time for people. Jade, good evening. It was the funeral service was held today at Union Cathedral in Valdosta. Hundreds of people turned out to remember the teen. Everyone who came to say goodbye to 17-year-old Kendrick Johnson dressed in the same colors. Some even had roses. Red and black, they was his favorite colors. And we're gonna give these roses to his mama. You could see just how difficult this day was for Kendrick Johnson's parents. 
Bishop Wade S. McCray had the difficult task of comforting all the people who love Kendrick so dearly. To uh, share with these children um, that regardless of the situation and the circumstances, uh, our aim, our goal, objective is to know the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Uh, he gives us victory even in this valley. Inside, the funeral service was moving and emotional. Kendrick's friends spoke. So did his football and basketball coach. Kendrick's father had this to say. Parents, you got to get this connection with your kids. You got to talk to them. Because you never know. Sometimes it's a knock and come at the door. We don't know who it is. Kendrick's friends still seem stunned over his death. I know we all expect to die at some point, but we ain't expect him to like leave this early. It seemed like it was like just two weeks ago when we were all talking at McDonald's about what we're gonna do when we grow up, and he was saying like he wanted to go to college and play football. On January 11th, Johnson, a student at Lowndes High School, was found dead inside the school. Investigators say they do not expect foul play. All right, we're going to be discussing the frustrating yet intriguing case of Kendrick Johnson. This is a very popular internet case, but also a popular request that we cover this case. Well, Captain, it was around 9.30 p.m. on the night of January 10th, 2013, when Jackie Johnson says that she really started to worry. Her son Kendrick had not come home from school, and according to friends, he had not gone to a basketball game that he was supposed to attend. Now, around 11 p.m., Jackie, we should make a note here, she is a school bus driver for the Lowndes County Schools. Mm -hmm. She drove to the school looking for her son, Kendrick. This was to be the first of many trips for Jackie that night as she drove back and forth from home to school, getting more upset with each passing trip. It was not like her 17-year-old boy not to call her to let her know where he was. Now, around 1230, Jackie, by this point, she's frantic. Mm -hmm. And she called the police and she reported her youngest son, Kendrick Johnson, as missing. The dispatcher told her that Kendrick was probably just out with some friends or chasing some girl. Jackie insisted that that was not the case. She explained that even if he didn't call her, he would have called his sister or called his brother. Well, this always frustrates me. Hey, let's just assume the worst. Let's not assume the best, right? Mm -hmm. Let's assume the worst at any time that somebody goes missing. After some convincing, a missing persons report went out. Law enforcement called Jackie around 4 a.m. confirming that they were out looking for her son, Kendrick. Jackie's husband, Kendrick's father, Kenneth, he's a truck driver, and on this night, he was in Pennsylvania. So while Jackie waited, she sat with her mother. All Jackie could do is worry, and her mother prayed. By sunup, Jackie resolved to go to the high school, the last place she knew Kendrick to be. She visited the main office around 8.30 a.m., asking if anyone had seen her son. She was taken to a guidance counselor's office to wait. She waited and she waited. It felt like eternity, I'm sure, for her. Why were they not telling her anything is what she wondered as she sat waiting. It was a while. She, she was sitting there that she began to receive text messages on her phone. They said there are ambulances and fire trucks in the parking lot. No one can come in the entrance. This, of course, did not make her feel any better. Right. While sitting there fretting over Kendrick missing the counselor's phone rang and he picked up during this short conversation Jackie overheard something she wasn't intended to hear someone said to the guidance counselor a little too loudly on the other end of the phone something very ominous she could clearly hear one short terrifying sentence and that was they found a body in the gym the counselor then got up from his chair and left the room and Kendrick Johnson was 17 years old. He was a basketball player, a football player. He was a track star, sophomore. 
mm-hmm. in high school. And this was not going to be a typical school day. The um, Lowndes High School is in Valdosta, Georgia. And this is a town of about 54,000 people. Now, Lowndes was one of two high schools in the town in 2013. The school had around 3,000 students. The high school's mascot was the Vikings. Now, school had only been back in session for about two days after a long winter break, after the long winter holiday. That morning around 10 a.m., athletic trainer Philip Pipelow, he was teaching a life sports class in the old gym. So just a side note here, like many schools that have added on to their facilities over the years, this high school had a new gym and an old gym. And the story that we are going to talk to you about today takes place in the old gym. The teacher had handed out a survey for the students to take. After having completed her survey, a female student climbed from the bleachers onto an upright set of rolled up mats. There were 21 of these mats rolled up and standing upright in this area of the gymnasium. These mats are used by the athletic department. Conflicting reports here, but some reports indicate that they are wrestling mats. Others say that they were used for cheerleading. Uh, I'm, I'm too old to have an opinion, a very strong opinion of, of what this is. But remembering back in my day, Captain, uh, at our high school, mm-hmm. it was very common that these mats were primarily used for wrestling, but they were often they often served a multitude of purposes. Right. So the mats were tightly rolled and placed vertically, packed together in a tight group in the corner of the gym. And it was a girl that first uh, saw Kendrick in the mat, right? Well, she looked down the hole, the, you know, the, the center of one of these mats and noticed two feet visible inside one of the rolled up mats. She called friends over to see, you know, what this is. And to the student's horror, they saw two white socks with gray toes that were sticking, that, that were still on the feet of someone's body down inside this mat. Yeah, I, I think at first they just thought somebody was hiding Some of the students began to scream. The teacher sprinted over to the mats and one by one pulled them down onto their sides until he could get to the mat that the students were pointing at. When he pulled the mat down, it hit the floor with a loud thud. The bottom end of the mat, so the the end of the mat that had been touching the floor. Well, when the teacher knocked the mat over, from that end, out spilled halfway spilled out the body of a male student with dreadlocks. And there was also blood and vomit. It was clear to the teacher that the person in the mat was dead. Another teacher quickly cleared the students from the gym and the school was placed on lockdown and nine one one was called. And obviously this is the body of Kendrick Johnson. So Kendrick Johnson was born October 10th, 1995 to Jacqueline and Kenneth Johnson His friends, who called him KJ, describe him as a quiet boy, unlikely to cause trouble, who was obsessed with math and football. Kendrick was a three-sport athlete. He played football, basketball, and he was on the track team. He was 5'10", around 160 pounds, and was known for being a hard-hitting safety on the football team. There were some accounts out there that indicate that Kendrick's home life was less than perfect. Some say that his father was living with a girlfriend and his mother was known to be less than involved. Uh, but I'm going to make a little bit of an argument here um, that I think can an argument that can be made against this. As Kendrick, he enjoyed spending a lot of time at his friends' houses. Right. So typical it, it, teenager. Right. That's very common for a, a you know for a teenager to want to be at his friends' homes often and it might give the appearance of a mother that's not really involved but well I mean, frankly when how much can te- you be involved when the child decides not to be at home <laughs> well right and but also the child maybe doesn't want you to be involved i mean it's a teenager i mean you're not telling your parents much of anything you know they ask you how school was you go that was good and then yeah and and i think both of us did that too in high school you go to high school 
And then at night, you'd be hanging out with your friends or over at a buddy's house. Yeah, and when you're 16, 17, God forbid anybody ask you how your day was. Right. Right. It was okay. Did you learn anything? No. Yeah, or it's like... What did you do? Nothing. School was prison. It's like prison. Well, on the morning of January 11th, that was a um, when Kendrick's body was found in the gym mat, the Lowndes County Sheriff... Chris Pine's office was called to the high school. The sheriff himself was on his way back to Valdosta with his deputy, Joe Crow, when he received the call about the body at the school. In the interim, patrol officers and EMTs arrived at the scene and taped off the gym with crime scene tape. The school was placed in lockdown mode until police assured that there was no threat to the students. Classes resumed while the investigation proceeded. It's not clear when Sheriff Preen arrived at the school, but he confirmed to the media that day that the body was that of a student and that the student's death was being investigated as a possible homicide. Preen's office and the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, the GBI for short, spent all of the day and the next day carefully documenting the scene collecting evidence and interviewing witnesses at the school. Right. Here's what we know from the crime scene report, law enforcement statements, media reports, and the video of the scene. So the crime scene investigator, this is James Thornton. He arrived at the high school's old gym at approximately 1048 AM on January 11th. Thornton was briefed by investigations staff Sergeant Jack Winningham that a teacher had pulled down the mat in which feet were seen by students sitting on the mat and that a body had been positioned headfirst inside the rolled up mat. When EMTs arrived on the scene, the victim was identified as student Kendrick Lamar Johnson. Mm -hmm. He was slightly pulled out of the mat and it was determined by EMTs to be deceased. Now we do not know how Kendrick was identified, whether he was identified by a teacher or a student, it, right. Or an administrator. We, we don't know, but we do know that the school knew that Kendrick Johnson's mother was looking for him. Well, and presumably they, they may have known that Kendrick did not show up for his fourth period class the day before. Right. So multiple law enforcement and investigative personnel were on the scene at this point. So we have people from the County Sheriff's office. We have people from the regional crime lab and the Georgia Bureau of investigations as well. It was noted that the old gym contained bleachers along the North and South walls, and that there were approximately 21 rolled up mats in the Southwest corner of the gym. Investigators inspected the entry slash exit doors and windows and, and determined that there were no signs of forced entry into the gym. The following items were found at the scene. One was a black and white Adidas shoe size nine and a half. This was found on the floor in front of a rolled up mat. They also found a yellow folder found on the gym floor in front of a rolled up mat. A science textbook on the floor behind two rolled up mats near the southwest wall. A medium-sized gray Hollister brand pullover hooded sweatshirt was found on the concrete floor near the rolled-up mats. A rolled-up mat containing Johnson's body lying in the horizontal position on the concrete floor in the southwest corner of the old gym. There were possible blood stains on the south wall of the old gym. A test was later performed, and these stains were tested and and found by a tech from the GBI that they were determined to be blood. Right. They also found a pair of black, gray, and orange Nike shoes near the bleachers on the north wall of the old gym. All of these items of evidence were collected. They were tagged and locked inside a car belonging to the crime scene technician. At approximately 4 p.m., the county coroner, Bill Watson, arrived to conduct his examination on Kendrick's body. Now, Georgia law requires that the coroner be called as soon as law enforcement discovers that there is a body. But here, 
The coroner didn't arrive for approximately six hours after they found the body. Hmm. Sheriff Preen would later say that the custom, custom, despite the law requiring immediate notification, was that the sheriff would call the coroner only after the scene had been cleared and then been thoroughly investigated so that the coroner wouldn't have to just be sitting in the parking lot waiting for the sheriff to clear the scene. But the law is that right when a body is found, you call the coroner. Yeah. And that was not done. Right. Well, let's talk about that for a second, Captain, because here is an issue that we have seen time and time again. You know, we've covered feels like a bazillion cases now. Mm -hmm. So bazillion and one. So when you have these different law enforcement agencies, a lot of them, you know, like, okay, so a lot of people have jobs where you have a hundred different supervisors yeah. that are kind of watching what you're doing, that they're kind of cataloging your work. If you don't perform your job or your task well or do things how you're supposed to, according to protocol, you don't work there for a long time. Right. Now, when you have like the sheriff's office or these different law enforcement agencies, there's very little people to police the police. So so the sheriff, who he's the head honcho over there in the county, yeah. he only has some people to listen to answer to. One, the governor, who's not going to get involved in much because he has other stuff. He or she has other things to do. Correct. Then you also have, well, you know, well, maybe he has to answer to the general public because they elect him. Well, a lot of stuff gets forgotten over the course of, you know, we don't, we don't sit down and elect a new sheriff every 30 days. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is, this takes place over some time. So some things like this get, re, get lost. Well, we do in parts unknown every 30 days, we, we elect a new sheriff. So what I'm getting at though, is this quote unquote custom this might not be a terribly uncommon thing where you have individuals that kind of do things their own way and it's not right. It's absolutely not right. They should be following the law. However, there's not really anybody there to police that. So we also have the sheriff stating that no law enforcement personnel touched the body in the gym until the coroner arrived and had examined the body. The coroner later stated that he didn't agree with with Prine's statement about the custom and said that the sheriff had breached protocol with the six hour delay in notification in April of 2013. It, this is in a statement from the coroner. He said that by the time he had arrived at the old gym, yeah. the scene had been compromised. He didn't elaborate to what that meant, but what we have here, Captain, is it's kind of a he said, he said situation. We don't know if the sheriff, Prine, if he's to blame or is the, you know, was this actually a real custom, that an agreement that the coroner and the sheriff had together? This could be, this is either the coroner stating, look, the sheriff's statement is wrong right. and he broke protocol or it's the coroner just covering his own butt. Right, but you have these protocols you have these laws in place to one kind of police the police but it's also to cover your own butt because if then if there is some something wrong with the investigation that the police can say look we followed uh our procedures to the letter mm -hmm. and they didn't in this case and there's also a bunch of crime scene photos that they were taking place that they were taking uh where you can see the investigators just wearing regular shoes where their shoes should have been covered mm -hmm. and those little blue things or whatever, but you could clearly see that their shoes weren't. So it, when you have a scene, whether you think it's a accidental death or a murder or whatever it is, you should follow the protocol that's set up for you. The coroner observed Kendrick's body lying on its left side, sticking out of the rolled up mat. The rest of his body from the abdomen down was inside of the mat. His head was lying in a pool of blood. Now, the coroner noted the following. Kendrick was wearing a white undershirt and an orange T-shirt and white T-shirt, blue jeans, boxers, and white socks. There was a pair of white, gray, and orange Nikes inside of the mat, but not on Kendrick's feet. The crime scene photos taken from the end of the mat where Kendrick's feet were shown that these shoes were located at the same end as his feet, 
not at the end where his head was. Kendrick's right arm was in a position that appeared to cover his face and his left arm was along his body with his forearm bent toward his head. His fingers were curled on both hands. A black wire with white earphone was hooked around his left hand at the middle finger and index fingers. Kendrick's face was swollen and he had blood coming out of his eyes, nose, and mouth. Dried blood was visible on his arms, chest, and face. Kendrick's eyes were swollen with blood visible in his eyes and burst blood vessels. And it appears that there is no signs of blunt force trauma to Kendrick on his face or his body. And it also appears that there's no wounds, like puncture wounds or anything to his body as well. Yeah, and that's specifically noted in the lab report by the crime scene technician. Now, also found at the scene was a second black and white Adidas shoe that was located on the concrete floor near Kendrick's head. This was sitting in a pool of blood. It was, as was the other, a nine size nine and a half matching the shoe that had previously been found intact. There was also a LG cell phone, which was found in Kendrick's left front jeans pocket. The mat that Kendrick was found in measured 74 inches in length. So just a touch over six feet tall when standing on its side and 34 inches in diameter. That's 34 inches rolled up. Mm -hmm. The end where Kendrick's feet were positioned was approximately 14 and a half in diameter at its widest point. This is the opening. Right. Okay. And then the end where his head was positioned was approximately 14 and three quarters inches in diameter at the opening. And there was some bloody paper towels that were found in a trash can in the girl's restroom, which is located uh, near the old gym. These, like all of the other items for evidence, were collected to be tested. And all evidence was taken to the crime lab for further testing and investigation. There's so much more to get into on the Kendrick Johnson case. We'll get to it right after this quick beer break. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you look forward to the holidays? Maybe you struggle with seasonal blues. This time of year can be a lot, and it's natural to feel some sadness or even anxiety about it. But adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot, something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com garage today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, hel dot slash garage. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. With the Internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash podcast free. All lowercase, shopify.com slash podcast free, shopify.com slash podcast free. All right, we're back. Cheers, mates. Cheers. Now, this next thing, Captain, is according to CNN. I want to be very clear about that. So according to CNN, the initial patient care report written by EMTs with the South Georgia Medical Center who were on the scene in the gym on January 11th stated, bruising noted to the right side jaw. Mm -hmm. Now, the coroner arranged for Kendrick's body to be transferred to the crime lab for an autopsy. Thornton, who we had talked about earlier, the uh, technician, accompanied the body and placed it in crime cooler number two around 5.30 p.m. that evening. After having investigated the scene for several hours and consulting with the coroner, Sheriff Prine and the school superintendent, this is Wes Taylor, released a joint statement that 
that reads as follows. Although the exact cause of death is yet to be determined, as of this stage of the investigation, nothing has been discovered to indicate foul play was involved. An autopsy will be conducted on Monday by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation Medical Examiner's Office to attempt to determine an exact cause of death. Taylor went on to express his sadness at the death of a student and offered condolences for the family, but neither the sheriff nor the superintendent named the student. Kendrick Johnson's name was not released until the following day. At some point on January 11th, law enforcement met with Jackie Johnson. Presumably, they told her that Kendrick had been found deceased. On Sunday, January 13th, Sheriff Preen received a request from Kendrick's father to personally identify his son's body. According to James Thornton's lab report, Thornton escorted Kendrick's parents to the cooler room at the lab and they identified Kendrick's remains. Kenneth later said that his handsome son looked nothing like himself lying there on the slab. The following day, on Monday, January 14th, Kendrick's body was taken to the GBI for an autopsy. Late that night, the local ABC news station ran a piece reporting that Kendrick's preliminary autopsy results indicated no foul play and that Kendrick had no visible injuries to his body that could have caused his death. The article goes on to state that investigators saw no signs of a struggle and that they believed that Kendrick somehow got into the mat and couldn't get himself out. Mm -hmm. Investigators believe that Kendrick fell or reached inside the mat to get a shoe and got stuck. Kendrick's father immediately questioned the police findings, stating that he believes Kendrick was murdered. And it wasn't until May 2nd of that year that the official autopsy report would be released to the public. And let's go through some of the uh, reports. So the detailed report states that the official cause of death of Kendrick Johnson was positional asphyxia. Uh, so this is suffocation due to the position of the body. The body was in a position that prevented it from breathing. Right. causing the death. There was no significant injuries identified in this report. Fluid has drained from the nose and mouth. Decomposition smell was detected and skin slippage was visible on the body. Bloating and skin discoloration were noted as well. The body was found with earbuds and a wire. There was also a starburst wrapper that was found stuck to the left elbow. Two tiny abrasions were noted on Kendrick's right wrist and left fourth finger. Both are less than an eighth inch. A third abrasion was noted on the same finger, approximately five sixteenths of an inch was this abrasion. Drug tests were con conducted on the body and were found to be negative. Everything else was noted to be normal. There was no indication that any bruising on the jaw was observed or noted in this detailed report. The conclusion of the doctor's report is that Kendrick's death was an accident. The release of the autopsy report came at the conclusion of the sheriff's office four month investigation into Kendrick's death. In the course of that investigation, hundreds of students were interviewed and witnesses or people connected or rumored to be connected to Kendrick were interviewed as well. Lab results Surveillance video and physical evidence were all reviewed and their findings were as follows. You want to go, you, would you mm -hmm. like to go through this? I find this part maybe the most interesting thing here in this case. Okay. So this is, they're going to lay out what they believe went down based off of the evidence that they found, uh, which includes surveillance video and the state of the body once it was found. Mm -hmm. So, According to this report, Kendrick was last seen on surveillance footage entering the old gym at 1.09 p.m. on January 10, 2013. He entered the gym behind another student who went in a different direction but was confirmed to have gone immediately to class. Kendrick was seen entering the gym and bearing right in the direction of the mats in the corner. No one else is visible. Within 15 minutes, other students can be seen entering the gym for class and playing basketball in the gym. 
And that evening, multiple teams held practices in the gym without anyone noticing anything unusual. Kendrick was known to not have a locker for his gym stuff. Okay. Many of the kids didn't want to pay the locker fees required to store their things, so they would hide their items, including shoes, inside the rolled-up mats that were in the old gym lying horizontally. It seems a little silly that a school would make students pay for a locker that they had to use for class, but go ahead. The kids would just reach into the mat, tuck their shoes in, out of sight and Mm. retrieve them later. It was confirmed that Kendrick did this and he he even shared the shoes he hid in the mat with another student. They would just each use the shoes as necessary and then place them back into the mat so that the other one could retrieve them later. And I wonder if the shoes were a part of like their gym outfits because I know he's part of a weight training class uh, just like any other gym class. But uh, at my school, you didn't have to change your shoes. You just had to change your outfit. Mm-hmm. And then you could, but maybe this school said, not only do you have to change your clothes for class, but you have to change your shoes as well. I think there's one piece that we just went over that I want to highlight real quick before we move on into this report. Okay. So one item that I hope everybody picked up on was when we talked about the locker fees and how many of the students didn't want to pay the locker fees, it was noted that most of these, the the, the students that didn't want to do this, they would hide their items, which included shoes inside the rolled up mats in the old gym. But the mats are typically placed horizontally. They're, they're sitting, they're lying on their side on the ground. Okay. On the floor of the gym. Yeah. Cause how would you hide in the mats if it, they were placed vertically? There you go. I always thought that was, pretty strange but so they're normally vertical or normally horizontal and that way you can kind of just stick your shoes in either side and then also if there's other shoes in there you can kind of just push those aside as well Mm -hmm. well the report goes on to state that over the holiday break which had ended on january 9th the day before kendrick's death the mats had all been moved into an upright position and packed into the corner of the gym The sheriff concluded that Kendrick had run into the gym to get his shoes, but couldn't find them because the mats had all been moved. Mm -hmm. So he climbed up onto the top ends and walked along until he saw the sneakers down in the bottom of one of the rolled up mats. The sheriff then says that students were clearly used to hanging out up there when the mats were stored in this way, as they found numerous candy wrappers and soda bottles among the mats. Kendrick likely climbed into the ble- onto the bleachers, I'm sorry, walked on top of the mats, and then reached in to grab his shoes. Mm-hmm. He likely had one arm down in the mat and the other holding on and either fell into the hole or squeezed into it trying to reach the shoe and then couldn't get himself out and then slipped down further into the mat as he squirmed. Mm-hmm. He couldn't reach his cell phone to call for help. Remember, we said that was found in his pocket. Now, the cell phone, his parents actually didn't know about. This was a cell phone that he got from a cousin, which the cousin didn't even know how he got it. The last call was made on the cell phone, I think, a couple weeks before this incident. Mm-hmm. And so they don't even know if he could have made a call. If, but, it, if it was even being used for phone calls. Yeah, they think he was using it as like an MP3 player or, or iPod, pop, iPod or something. Right. And I also think um, with these texting apps, he could have been using some app to text people when he had Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. But he might have thought, if I can get to my phone, I could at least text somebody. It's, it's believed that he likely asphyxiated fairly quickly. This would have happened from the abdominal organs compressing Kendrick's diaphragm. Mm -hmm. The tightness of the mat constricting his chest and or the mat impeding his ability to breathe through his mouth. Investigators said Kendrick likely died and the blood was postmortem purged from all the blood that had rushed to his head and as he was suspended upside down in the mat. Now, the mats weighed 700 pounds each and were over six feet tall when standing on their ends. They were all packed together, and the one Kendrick was in was at the back of the pack. He would not have been able to move that mat without moving several other mats. One of the things that I find interesting here, too, is when they talk about the opening, uh, his shoulders were roughly about four or five inches 
bigger than the opening. So meaning that it would have caused them to suffocate a lot faster because now there's no air that's, you know, the, the amount of air that's in the mat is very little. Mm -hmm. But I also wonder, you have um, people in the gym 15 minutes after him, 20 minutes after him. You have classes all day. You have practices all night. But he's at the far back, surrounded by all these mats and how much was that cutting off any sound you know like his body was also cutting off sound from the mat so if he even if he was yelling how much would that deaden the sound well depending on how quickly he got to the top of the mats and reached down in there there's a decent chance he may have expired before those students entered the gym gym 15 minutes later right as they said in this report, they believe he would have died very quickly once falling into the mat. Uh, the folder in the science book that were found at the scene were Kendrick's. Uh, it's believed that he had put them down on top of the mats when he climbed up, and they fell down when the mats were moved by the teacher to get at the body, along with one sneaker that was not found inside the mat with Kendrick. Right. We don't know whether maybe just one sneaker was down inside the mat or whether Kendrick somehow managed to retrieve one, but then got trapped while reaching for the other, the paper towels found in the girl's bathroom, which, um, yeah, the bloody paper towels. Yeah. These actually, it, the report states that they are paper towels, that they were bloody paper towels found in the trash can. Mm -hmm. Later, the report says that these are tissues. So, they had a trace of blood on them. Um, it was from a flag girl uh, who had gotten hurt during a practice and used the tissues just to clean herself up. So the, the blood was confirmed to contain female DNA, so not male DNA. Right. The dried blood spatters on the wall that were found about 50 feet from the mat where um, uh, Kendrick was later found. Yeah was determined through DNA testing not to be Kendrick's blood. But yeah. it is not known who this blood belongs to. Yeah, and if you look at these, uh, the pictures of these blood droplets or whatever on the wall, um, they're very dark. They don't even look red. So they almost just look like some kind of crud. Could have um, been there for quite some time. Yeah, I, I think so. And there's a bunch of arguments that it's impossible that these wouldn't have been cleaned off. It's impossible. Oh, yeah, because my school was so clean that I regularly yeah. ate off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my high school, my middle school, both were, I mean, they're relative, relatively clean. Right, right, right. But, just but not, they weren't, I mean, they weren't like doctor office clean. Not you know, even they, close. Right, yeah. right. They, they weren't even household clean. Right. You know? Now, the sheriff concluded at the conclusion of his four-month probe into Kendrick's death that it was a tragic freak accident that had occurred because of a perfect storm of events leading up to it. The sheriff and his deputies emphasized that their lengthy investigation had been as thorough as possible and that the freak accident conclusion was the only possible one. There was no evidence whatsoever, they said, of any kind of struggle or scuffle either on Kendrick's body or in the gym where he was found. Kendrick had neither fatal wounds nor defensive wounds of any kind. But we have wounds on his hands, right? There were some abrasions, what's, what was listed as abrasions on his hands, on his fingers. Right. Kendrick's parents were not satisfied with the results of the autopsy and the sheriff's department's conclusion. Right. From the beginning... They were convinced that Kendrick's death was not accidental. They were skeptical that Kendrick really could have died. You know, how could he have died in such a bizarre way? How could their muscular son fit inside this rolled up mat? Uh, wouldn't there at least be part of his legs possibly sticking out of the mat, right. which they said appeared to be uh, just a little over six feet in height and be visible to students who entered the gym just 15 minutes later. And we had just kind of talked through another one of the, the Johnson's questions. They wondered why nobody would have heard their son screaming for help. Yeah. They wondered how did his sneakers get 
onto the top on top of him inside the mat unless someone had placed him there. Yeah, there seems to be conflicting stories on the shoes where some people say that there was one shoe, you know, that was behind him and one shoe that was still in front of him. So that's that's an interesting thing to talk about. There was a shoe found on the gymnasium floor. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a shoe found inside. There were shoes found inside the mat with Kendrick. The troubling thing here is we have two pairs of sh shoes. Yeah. We also have students keeping their shoes inside these mats. Right. Um, more, a lot of students. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Several of them. So we have the shoes that Kendrick's wearing. We have the shoes that he was presumably going after. And then we have other possible shoes belonging to other students. I don't know that we're going to have a, 100% conclusion and a, a great answer on why the shoes were found in the positions that they were. Mm -hmm. um, my thought would be that there was probably some squirming going on. If he had fallen in there right? or if he was placed in there, if he was attacked and rolled up in this mat, if he, if he came to after being attacked, he would probably be squirming as well. Right. So it, it, it is very tricky. It's tricky because it would look like somebody may have placed some of these items in there. But I mean, how did, how did any of this stuff come about? I mean, how, is there a chance that somebody dropped some shoes in there afterwards, not seeing his feet, not seeing his socks in there? Right. I mean, the girl that found him, was described as having gone up on top of the mats and looking down inside. And we know that that gym was being used regularly, even though it was the old gym. We have students going in there just 15 minutes afterwards. We have classes being conducted as well all day. as and then we have practices all night. Yeah. So and did somebody use their gym shoes for one of these practice? And then they're like, wait, these mats are normally set down horizontal. Mm-hmm. But now they're vertical. Well, I'll just toss my shoes up there. And, th and then they fell on top of Kendrick. Well, I think what we should do here, Captain, is I think we should get into the Johnsons and their feeling, Kendrick's parents and their feelings and thoughts. And that way, to, to, to lead us into these important discussions on the mm -hmm. different items so we can take a look at them one by one, but knowing why there is such a debate on certain items. Right. Makes so sense. It, was, it was Kendrick's father that saw his son's body in the crime lab. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's easy to understand why his parents felt that he had been beaten to death. His Kendrick's face appeared to be bloated, uh, misshaped. There was discoloration on his body. There was skin slippage and red eyes. Right. So this must have been extremely upsetting to the parents to see. They eventually posted this picture on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, you can Google it if you want. Um, it's pretty horrific. After hearing the sheriff's findings, after hearing the conclusion of the autopsy report, Kendrick's parents began a campaign to uncover what had really happened to their son. This, this started kind of way back when, because the day after his body was discovered, his parents contacted Reverend Rose, of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. This is a civil rights organization. Reverend Rose promised the family that he would do anything he could to help. So we will we'll refer to them as the SCLC. Uh, the SCLC began an investigation into the circumstances surrounding Kendrick's mysterious death. At the same time, the local chapter of the NAACP was voluntarily looking into the case as well. Now, the Johnsons, they hired an attorney to help them pursue legal action in their quest to find out what happened to Kendrick. Public statements were made claiming that Kendrick's death was racially motivated and that if Kendrick had been white, the outcome of the investigation would have been different. The Johnsons began to allege that there was an institutional cover-up concealing the true facts around their son's death. Mm-hmm. Independent media outlets such as CNN helped bolster the Johnson's case by providing coverage, raising questions about the sheriff's investigation and filing requests for information to try to obtain the case files and evidence. 
The cause started to attract attention. Hundreds of supporters began to march and rally, demanding justice for Kendrick. According to CNN, the demonstrations in the streets with chants of no justice, no peace became almost a daily occurrence after the sheriff had closed his investigation. Al Sharpton attended one of these rallies. Seven members of Kendrick's family were arrested in April 2013 for obstruction. They were participating in a rally and blocking the entrance to the county's judicial complex. Mm -hmm. Then a Facebook tribute page was established by the family. Well, and remember when I said they posted a picture of Kendrick after the autopsy? Yeah. When he had to identify him? They took those pictures and they put them on T-shirts. And so at a lot of these events, they'd be wearing those shirts. Yeah, and this has become a kind of a famous photo, I would say, because I believe through this captain, is, you know, when they released, the, his parents released this picture online, they start wearing it on a graphic tee right. at these rallies and these events. I think when people saw this photo, this is when the public, when the public outrage started. You know, people really wanted this case to be reopened to figure out what had happened. Well, it looks like Kendrick was like beaten and disfigured. Mm -hmm. And so if you just hear, you know, black student is murdered at school and you see a picture of his face, you think, well, heck, somebody beat him to death. But once you find out that he was trapped upside down and that all this blood is rushing to his face, that that is the reason or at least part of the reason why mm -hmm. his face looks that way. Well, and it's a, uh, to put it bluntly, it's a, it's a black student at a, a Southern school. Right. You know, that's not, we know, we know the sad history of our country and some of the people that have lived in this country along the way. Mm -hmm. And, um, it doesn't make it any easier to, it doesn't make it any easier to accept that this is an accidental death, giving the circumstances surrounding it and so many questions surrounding it. Now the Johnsons, they began to make allegations about people specific people that they believe to be responsible for killing their son. Mm -hmm. The Facebook tribute page named some boys who the Johnson stated had it out for Kendrick. They posted that gruesome po picture that we talked about. Mm -hmm. And with the caption that said, look what someone did to our son. Mm -hmm. Now the Johnson's didn't name the boys outright that they believed were responsible but it was pretty clear to people in the area who they were referring to because they named, they, you know, they made some specific details about these individuals mm -hmm. that made it pretty easy to figure out who they were. Now, people in the community, they began to harass and threaten the boys and their family. The allegations became increasingly public, um, appearing in the media through TV interviews and print publications. The Johnsons alleged that the coroner not being called for six hours gave law enforcement in the gym a chance to cover up what had really happened that day. Kenneth said that when he went to identify Kendrick's body, the air in the cooler was not cold. It was warm. It was hot air. This implying that the coroner was attempting to destroy physical evidence on the body by speeding up the decomposition process. Mm -hmm. Kendrick's clothing disappeared somewhere between the GBI, which conducted the official autopsy and the Harrington funeral home, which received the body in preparation for the burial. The transport company who picked up the body from the GBI signed an inventory receipt, acknowledging that it received Kendrick's personal effects. But when the body arrived at the funeral home, all that accompanied it was a broken pair of headphones. The clothes have never been located. Right. Okay. But that's, tr it was transported from GBI to the funeral home. Mm -hmm. And when, when they picked it up, there was clothes there. When oh. they dropped it off, it wasn't. So the, the, you know, you want to blame somebody for the missing clothes, blame the person that transported him. Because if they signed that, Hey, we picked him up and there was clothes. And when they dropped him off at the funeral home, the funeral home said there's no clothes. Then we know who took the clothes. Yeah, I don't think that this is the... Or misplaced them. I don't think that this is the parents blaming the GBI. 
I think this is the parents just pointing out this is something strange that shouldn't have occurred that happened. Right. So the clothing have, has never been found. Kenneth and Jackie, the parents allege that the missing clothing clothing likely contained evidence of physical struggle, that the clothes had been destroyed by those out to cover up the actual murder. They also point out that the original EMTs on the scene had noted bruising that was noted on the EMT report. The GBI pathologist did not note this bruising on the autopsy report. Adding fuel to the fire, a retired FBI agent who looked at the crime scene photos agreed with the family. This is Harold Copus, who now works as a private detective. Mm -hmm. He questioned why police didn't collect the sneakers with no blood on them into evidence. So let's yeah, be well, we're going to question, you know, I'm going to question anybody that doesn't tag and bag everything that they can find, even if you don't think it has any validity at all. Mm -hmm. In May of 2013, all of these questions led to the Johnsons. This is with the help of their attorney to get an exhumation order to dig up Kendrick's remains for a second autopsy. The actual digging up of the casket was attended by family members, teammates, friends, and supporters of the Johnson's cause. Kendrick's body was sent to Florida to Florida pathologist, Dr. William Anderson for an autopsy paid for by the family and supporters. Dr. Anderson's autopsy report was explosive. It directly contradicted the original autopsy findings of accidental death. Mm -hmm. Anderson's report stated that there was physical evidence of blunt force trauma to the right neck and soft tissues consistent with inflicted injury. Anderson went on to state that the injury was likely inflicted by someone else and that the death should be investigated as a homicide. So the Kendrick Johnson, it seems as if it's pretty simple it's accidental death. Then these little things come out. Makes you pretty suspicious that, you know, why why was it investigated this way? Why were these reports put out this way? And is this possibly a murder and not an accidental death? Well, and I think what we're seeing here, Captain, is that in fact that it's absolute that it's not that simple. That there were some question marks along the way. There were some concerns by his family. Mm -hmm. And we ha now have this four month investigation that states that this was in fact an accidental death. Then once we get the, the opportunity for a second autopsy, we find out we're getting information that, that might squash everything that was found in that first investigation. The Johnsons just may be right. And their son may have been killed. Well, let's dissect tomorrow. These little points of contention and uh, let's debate them. And let's hear your viewpoints and my viewpoints, and let's see if we can get to the bottom of any of this. All right, and we will see everybody back here tomorrow in the garage. Until then, be good, be kind, and don't live. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. With the Internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash podcast free. All lowercase, shopify.com slash podcast free, shopify.com slash podcast free. <laughs> 